In 1864, Warden and Company erected a sawmill and a grist mill on the river four miles east of the community known as Hellgate, where the first settlers of the area lived. In 1865, they moved their store to a new location called Missoula Mills, what today is the north end of Higgins Street. By the late 1870s, the first Higgins Street bridge was built, St. Pat's Hospital opened, and the Missoula Fire Department started its tradition of saving lives and easing pain and suffering. A tradition that is still going on today, we travel back in time and give you a look at how the department started and the major events in our history. In 1877, the first fire department was organized in the small but expanding town of Missoula. The department was all volunteer and was mostly a bucket brigade. Not a whole lot is known about the first couple years of the department. C.P. Higgins is believed to be the first fire chief. In 1883, the charter for the town of Missoula was approved by the voters and Frank Woody was elected the mayor. In 1884, the first of several audits done by the Sanborn Insurance Company were done. The audits were used for insurance purposes of private businesses. The maps provided info on the size of the buildings, what the building was made of, and what was inside of the building. It also located fire stations and stated the capabilities of the apartments. In 1884, it stated there were five fire hydrants and 300 feet of hose at the Eddie Hammond store that was going to be put on a hose cart. In 1884, the first major and one of the city of Missoula's biggest fires burned down 22 blocks of the central business district. It started at Lieber's Bowling Alley by some arsonists, causing $30,000 in damage. Also, that year, according to the first Sanborn Insurance Risk Analysis, there were 1,200 people who lived in the city. The fire department consisted of one hose cart and 15 volunteers. The first fire department was located at 100 Main. In 1887, the first city hall was built. It housed the city hall, the police department, the jail, and the fire station. The building was located on the corner of Maine and Stevens, what is today known as Maine and Ryman. With the purchase of the first horse-drawn vehicle in 1889 known as the C.P. Higgins, named after the first fire chief of the department, the Wayne hose wagon pulled by the famous buckskin team of Prince and Snap. According to the old volunteer fireman records, there were no two finer horses anywhere in the Northwest. Snap measuring 17 hands had died in 1901 and his counterpart Prince had died the next year. When Montana became a state in 1889, Missoula reincorporated itself that same year into a city. Sometime during that time period, Missoula also purchased its first ladder truck. Exact dates are unknown. The ladder was originally hand-drawn and later was rebuilt to be one horse drawn. Most documentation of the ladder truck has to do with the horse that pulled it. The horse was leased to the city from Joe Nagel's livery stable. When the bell for a fire would go off, the horse was rushed across the street and hitched to the ladder. Most people got a good laugh out of it. The horse was widely known to be bulky and would often stop for no reason. It was rare if the ladder truck got there on time or at all. This ladder truck was rolled over going to a fire in the science hall on campus in the spring of 1902. Luckily, due to some agitation earlier in the year, a Seagraves City service truck was purchased. A hull team of Fred and Dan pulled it until replaced by Prince and Pete. It was equipped with ladders, a large chemical tank, and some other minor tools. It was considered state-of-the-art for the time. The city later bought a Stevens Durea hose truck tractor in 1915. It retrofitted the Seagrave City service truck to be pulled by the gas-powered truck. A LaFrance steam engine was purchased sometime in the late 1880s, but according to records, the city went through several engines in a short period of time because of defects from the factory, but finally settled on one, and it was the front-line steamer until 1905. In 1891, with the population of Missoula at 1,200 people, another Sanborn audit was done. By this time, the city had hired their first full-time fireman, an engineer. He was supported by 36 volunteers, one steam engine, a hook and ladder truck, and a hose wagon. Two years later, in 1893, the map indicates that there was 28 volunteers, one engineer paid, two drivers paid, and a paid chief. Two steam engines, a hose wagon, and a hook and ladder truck. At 7 o'clock p.m. on August 14, 1892, at the Blue Front Saloon located at the intersection of Front and Stevens, what is Front and Ryman today, on the south side of the street, about where the entrance to Karis Park is located. One of the biggest and strangest fire stories begins. When the fire broke out, it quickly grew and started to spread east, taking the building next to the saloon 
and west taking out an auction house. A high wind spread the fire north across the street and burned some structures and an annex of the Missoula Motel. Thirteen buildings were lost in all, most of which were said to be better off. The fire, though not as serious as fires in other western cities, was considered a close call, and if it had not been some good luck with the wind shift and the splendid and always intelligent firemen, the catastrophe was averted. Two hours after the fire, when there was a crowd still milling about the business section of Missoula, a tragic shooting occurred in which John Byrne shot down Maurice Higgins, son of Missoula's founder, and Paul Goldenbogen on Front Street. Higgins lingered for hours and eventually died. Goldenbogen eventually recovered. Burns was arrested by the late Sheriff W.H. Houston a few hours after the shooting, was tried, convicted, and eventually hanged by Sheriff Houston for the murder of Mr. Higgins. The shooting offset the excitement of the fire. The shooting of young Higgins was believed accidental, that Burns was shooting at Goldenbogen, but it was never cleared up to what prompted the attempt by Burns on the life of Goldenbogen. On July 12, 1896, the train station being built on what is now North Higgins Street started on fire. The people who had owned the land adjacent and lived north of the station were not happy with the construction because the new station cut off the traffic to the north. Due to the fact that the closest hydrant was located on the north side of the station, in the diagram, the red arrows show the route of travel of the initial wagon when it first got on scene. The steam engine had pulled to the front of the building and the hose wagon had went past the train station to the hydrant, hooked to the hydrant and laid a line back to the steam engine where it was at at the front of the building. The fire was eventually put out and the damage was fixed and the train station opened soon afterwards. After Robert S. Mentrum had stepped down in 1898, T. Robert Berger became the chief. He was the chief until E. W. Walling became the next chief from 1900 to 1902. 1902, Albert H. May became the next fire chief and held the position until 1910. In 1902, according to the Sanborn insurance maps, the population of the city was 7,000 people. There was a paid chief, a paid engineer, and two paid drivers, and 15 call men. They were paid 15 cents a call and 15 cents an hour every hour following. 27-year-old Thomas Michael Pope died on August 1, 1904 from injuries sustained in an accident on July 20. Tom Pope had been with the city fire department for four years and was known as one of the most valuable firemen. Pope had been driving the city work wagon when the hall team of Mack and Tile broke away and headed for home to the fire station. When rounding a corner, the wagon flipped over and Tom was thrown. He sustained a broken leg and many internal injuries, which eventually caused his death. Thomas Michael Pope was the first Missoula Fire Department related death. In 1905, the city bought a not fire engine. It replaced the old La France engine. The La France engine was put in reserve mode until 1908 when a second station on the south side of the river was opened. There is records of it being used effectively July 9th of that year on the 300 block between 5th and 6th Street. In May of 1912, the second station was abolished and the La France was put back into reserve status until 1914, when it was dismantled and the boiler was used to heat the station. In 1923, the boiler heater system was torn down and replaced by a more modern system. In 1911, big changes were coming to the city of Missoula. With the population increasing, the police and the jail moved to a new building. A new city hall was built, and the old city hall, jail, fire station was now just the fire station. In 1911, the city bought its first gas motor driven engine. The department became fully paid. There was one chief, one assistant chief, seven men, and one white English bulldog named Justice. They worked a day off every eighth day. The chief and the seven men were on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The sign seen here is the sign that was placed over the top of the old city hall sign. The, si the sign is one of two parts of the first fire station that the department still has. It was hung in the headquarters building built in 1955, located at Pine and Ryman, and was moved to the current headquarters station at Pine and Madison, where it sits now. The fire pole seen here is also in its third fire station, and is located at the headquarters fire station located on Pine and Madison. The fire pole is not used very much by the firemen anymore. Because of the injuries caused by it, the pole is now a traditional piece in the fire service and is kept for its historical value. In 1912, an alarm box system was put up around town. 
there were 24 boxes in all. When you opened them up and flipped the switch, a signal was sent back to the station that rang a bell and punched holes in a ticker tape machine. If box 15 was struck, one ring followed by a pause, then five rings. The ticker tape machine worked by punching holes in the paper, so there would be one hole, a space, then five holes. The alarm gave the fireman a general idea of where the fire was. The person striking the box was to stay there and show the fireman to the problem. The Florence Hotel caught on fire in January of 1913, one of Missoula's biggest fires of the air. The fire had started at the rear of the building and spread to the interior of the building, gutting the old hotel and the Missoula Real Estate Company. The great efforts of the fire department and the lack of no wind kept the fire from spreading to any other building. In March of 1913, the Fire Department Relief Association made out a formal incorporation. The organization's purpose is to take care of sick firemen and provide a pension for widows and orphans in case of death. It was also designed for firemen too old to work. The Grand Ball, as it was called, was held on May 15, 1913. The ball raised money for the Firemen's Disability Fund through its new relief association. 200 people showed up and $125 was cleared. March 6, 1915 was the end of an era. A long-standing tradition in the fire service, a gas engine-powered truck was bought to pull the extra fire department equipment. The veteran team of Prince and Pete and younger mates Jack and Snap were retired to the City Street Department. 1917, due to a change in state law that required all municipal departments to have a two-platoon system, it added three firemen to the department and changed the work week for the on-duty firemen. The firemen now only had to work either a night shift, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m., or an 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. day shift. So they got to see their families every day. Two platoons switched every two weeks to ensure a fair amount of hours per week. By the summer of 1917, the department was reorganized from its one chief, one assistant chief, and eight firemen to one chief, one assistant chief, one first assistant chief, one mechanic, and 11 firemen. Salaries were as follows per year. The chief, $1,800. The assistant chief, $1,350. The first assistant chief, $1,260. The auto mechanic, $1,350. And the eight firemen, $1,200 apiece. And there were three on-call firemen who made $120 a year. The three new on-call firemen spent the night at the fire station but had no daytime connection with the fire department. In 1919, Chief James T. Craney helped the department purchase its second gas-powered engine, an American LaFrance triple combination engine. The extremely diverse fire engine did three things. It hauled hose, ladders, and could pump water, and was part of the first era of what modern fire engines today are designed after. The apparatus was kept by the department and is still owned by the department today. It was refurbished in the 90s and is stored at the Fort Missoula Historical Museum. In November of 1927, the firemen of the city fire department organized itself into a labor union and was accepted into the International Association of Firefighters. Local number 271 was born, fighting for better wages, health benefits, disability benefits, and a better work week. The IAFF Local 271 has represented the firefighters of the city of Missoula for the last 78 years and is still going strong. With the Pacific Board of Fire Underwriters doing an analysis of the city during the late 1920s, they found that the city of Missoula was way behind. The underwriters wrote several times in the paper ridiculing the city for not being up to stand. Their argument was that the chief, J.T. Craney, at the time was doing an excellent with what he had. The department was understaffed and its equipment was outdated. They also said that Missoula still needed a second fire station on the south side of the river and staffed appropriately. The alarm box system needed to be expanded and moved out of the cramped firehouse into its own building. Improvements to the existing fire station needed to be done, too. In October of 1932, the Hammond Block in downtown Missoula caught on fire. With the great efforts of the fire department, the fire got too far ahead and the entire block burned to the ground. In 1936, the Florence Hotel caught on fire once again. When the fire department got on scene, they could see one person hanging out of a window needing help and were being told there were several people still inside. The firemen were said to have ran into the building and rescued six people and helped several others find their way out. Amazingly, no one was killed during this fire. By the next morning, all that was left was a smoldering pile of bricks. On Thursday, August 21st, 1941, the Missoula County Fairgrounds caught on fire. According to the Missoulian, 
A fire broke out in the east end of the grandstands about 5.40 Thursday afternoon. About 10 minutes after, employees in the fair office beneath the stands had first smelled smoke, an estimated 3,000 persons still in the stands for the final event. Seep through the seats in the northeast upper section. Without undue alarm, persons in the smoking section moved out of the stands, and persons in the stands settled back momentarily. Leaving it a blaze that could be checked without damage, increasing smoke changed their minds in a moment later, and they left orderly. Going into the grandstands enclosure with unusual calm. Fair officials, police officers, and sheriff's officials, along with volunteers, herded the last of the crowd east through a small opening between the grandstands and the bleachers, and through the tunnel of the bleachers to safety without a single casualty. The grandstands, in ten minutes, was a blazing inferno, and the intense heat pushed the crowd back hundreds of feet. Completely destroyed three buildings. The grandstands, the main livestock barn, and the 4-H club building. After the fire, a large crew of carpenters, and WPA workers on the airport project and all county equipment available moved to the grounds and volunteers to clear away the wreckage and erect temporary bleachers. The next day the fair went on without a hitch. On January 1st, 1942, the Shepherd Building, Gambles, and Yant stores were destroyed in Missoula. A fire that started in the basement of the Shepherd Hotel with New Year less than four hours old left a quarter block in the heart of Missoula, a smoking, ice-sheeted ruin today. Only the first floor of the corner structure housing Yant's clothing store and the Montana Army induction headquarters was saved, and it was a smoke-blackened, water-drenched, ice-covered mess. Loss was expected to be nearly $400,000 on the basis of estimates of representatives of the Greenhood Estate, owners of the Shepherd Motel and the Gamble Store buildings, and the Ross Estate, owner of the building housing Yant's store, and the Army Induction Headquarters. From 3.50 a.m. throughout the morning, firemen battled the spreading blaze in the coldest weather experienced in Missoula since February of 1937. At 8 a.m., while the fire was at its height, the mercury hit 17 degrees below zero. Water poured on the flames for hour after hour, frozen almost immediately, making adjoining portions of North Higgins Avenue and West Pine Street solid sheets of ice. While the flames leaped through the structures, grotesque icicles hung a few feet from them. By late on New Year's, the fire was brought under control. $400,000 in losses was expected. Two firemen were hurt, and one of MFD's coldest fires was finally over. In 1940, with the country coming out of the Great Depression, Arthur L. Quinn became the chief of the department. The Missoula Fire Department had fallen behind with old, outdated equipment. With World War II starting, the ability to purchase new fire equipment was not available. The city purchased a used fire engine from Spokane County in 1942. The engine, though used, was in great shape and had been rebuilt. It could pump 500 gallons per minute and could haul 1,200 feet of hose. Finally, the fire department got its much-needed updated equipment in 1947, a Seagrave 750 gallon per minute engine and a 750 gallon per minute combination engine aerial ladder were purchased. Both vehicles were more dependable, safer, and could pump more water than the previous equipment. The 85-foot aerial ladder truck also gave the firemen the ease of elevation at the pull of a lever. The two pieces of equipment were the first steps in the large growth the department would take over the next decade. And so begins the 50s. The 50s brought many things to the city and its fire department. The department was still being led by Chief Claire P. Kearns who served from 1947 to 1959. The city population at the time was 22,485 people and they were served by 28 full-time firefighters. They worked with six pieces of apparatus at that time, which are shown here with Chief Kearns. There were four pumpers, one combination pumper with an elevated ladder, and the chief's car. Firefighters of the day had to meet much different criteria than the applicants of today. As seen here in this announcement, which was posted in the Missoulian in January of 1951, applicants had to meet both height and weight requirements, be a male, and already be established in the city of Missoula. Also interesting were the wages of the day. A firefighter made $225 a month and the fire chief was making $305 a month. There were several significant fires in that time, as there was not yet a fire prevention division established in the city. 
Some locals may remember when the American Le Legion building burned in 1956. Or even the Bakke Motor Company building that was on Front Street when it burned in November of 1951. But by far, one of the greatest tragedies to affect the fire department and its firefighters occurred on December 30th, 1951. It was seven degrees out and snow covered the streets of Missoula. At 1.31 p.m., firefighters received a call to respond just across the intersection to the Ormisher's Grocery Store building at Main and what is today Ryman Streets. When they arrived, they found a rapidly progressing fire, which had begun in the basement and quickly spread throughout the two-story structure. Firefighters were working furiously in and around the structure to try and control the fire when the front wall and a marquee that extended from it weakened under the heated conditions and collapsed. The collapse injured two firefighters and killed three others. Those firefighters will never be forgotten. Their names were Bernard Albright, Walter E. Crane, and Elwood Saylor. As technology advanced, rebreathers became available to the fire departments across the country, and Missoula soon had them too. Today, these items are referred to as self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBAs. Though they didn't contain compressed air, as the units of today do, they were used for the same purpose, to allow a firefighter to breathe clean air when he was fighting fire in smoking conditions. As you can see, they had a strap that hung the unit around the front of the firefighter. He was it was essentially a mask that led to the box on the firefighter's chest. He would breathe air from the unit, and when he exhaled, that air went back into the system to be filtered and again rebreathed. The units were rated to last 5 to 15 minutes while working. Though the idea was sound, Missoula firefighters that worked in that time say that it took many years and several different types of units before they became reliable enough that the firefighters used them regularly. With the growing city and the need to house more firefighters and the fire department's growing fleet of equipment, the city built two new fire stations in 1954. The, new, the first was a new headquarters station downtown at Pine and Ryman. The second was a south side station at Mount Avenue and Park Street, which is still in use today. The 60s brought with them a developing department and a new leader. Chief Herb Wool served in that position from 1959 to 1967. The city's population had grown to 45,000 people, and we now employed 38 full-time firefighters. The need for additional equipment brought about the purchase of two brand new 1966 Seagrave fire engines. Following a history of multiple large-scale fires in the Missoula area that brought several fatalities, the fire department identified that educating the public in fire safety and enforcing fire codes at businesses, amongst other tasks, would benefit the community and make for a safer Missoula. Therefore, the fire department was expanded to create the Fire Prevention Bureau. It was going to be a large task and would need a strong leader to begin it. The person would be our first fire marshal, Joseph Fetter. The Bureau conducted safety inspections of public facilities. They went into the community and educated people in fire safety. Everything from how to handle fire extinguishers to safer kitchen practices. Today, their responsibilities are tenfold. 
but the same idea of making our community a safer place for its citizens has reduced the occurrence of fires and fire danger dramatically. The 60s were a time when there wasn't a 911 system. Emergencies had to be called over to the fire station phone, walked in and reported. Some people even called their local phone company who would in turn contact the fire department because the citizen himself was unsure of how to. They also had what were called alarm boxes. These boxes were usually located outside on a street corner or on the wall of a building. When one was opened and pulled, the tones would alert the firefighters to that intersection for the emergency. The fire department was responding to approximately 400 calls a year at the time, mostly fire and river rescue related. But at times, they were requested to respond for a call to medically assist. The firefighters were trained in first aid and carried what was called a resuscitator, but otherwise were not trained to effectively handle these types of calls. Here, retired battalion chief Lynn McAdams tells more about them. Uh, we could supplant and we could prepare a person for transport, and uh, but we weren't trained in, resu in uh, resuscitation. And uh, we had, but we did have a mechanical resuscitator. Yeah. We weren't trained in CPR. So what was a mechanical resuscitator? A mechanical resuscitator was like a suitcase that opened up, and you had a couple of O2 bottles there, and you had, and this would mechanical resuscitator would actually force you to breathe. You'd put this on, make a seal here, and you had a positive and a negative flow of oxygen, and it where you could see the chest rise and. As Missoula moved into the 70s, so did its fire department. Under new leadership, this time two men brought it into the decade. Robert E. Kelly continued to serve as fire chief from 1967 to 1978. Then Chief Jack Reed continued from 78 to 1980. The boundaries of the city, growing as rapidly as its population, the city now employed 45 full-time firefighters and had the need for a fire station even further to the south. Thus, Fire Station 3 was built at the intersection of Russell and Southwest Higgins, where it is still in operation today. Erected in 1973, it stood empty for several months while the city hired and trained a group of nine men to staff and run it. This was the largest group of firefighters ever hired at once by the Missoula Fire Department and still holds that record today. These men were also the first firefighters the city required to obtain the EMT basic certification, giving them medical training far and above any we had thus far been able to provide. The level of certification has been required of every firefighter hired since that time. Through the 70s, the fire department had what was called a sleepers program. This program recruited university students to help staff fire stations at nighttime. The young men were not trained in firefighting skills, but assisted firefighters with manpower things, such as hooking hoses to hydrants, laying supply lines, chasing tools, and setting up ladders in order to get the firefighters themselves into the buildings more quickly and make operations run more efficiently. In exchange, they were given a free room and paid $10 a month. It was identified that people needed a quick and easy number to remember when they were calling for help in an emergency. It was decided that Missoula would create a 911 dispatch center, one number where a citizen could call for any emergency and get the appropriate help on the way much faster. With all the advancement and things changing so rapidly, firefighter safety became more and more important. The fire service began to see how bad the effects of the job were on firefighters long term. The use of self-contained breathing apparatus was no longer an option. Bunker gear was improved and firefighter training was expanded. Again, with new leadership, we entered into the 80s. Chief Alfred J. Sampson served from 1980 to 1982. Then Chief Burton K. Walsh from 1982 to 1987. Approximately 50 firefighters now serve the city, and its fleet of apparatus had grown too numerous to list. 
The new decade, though, did bring the addition of four new Mack fire engines and a 95-foot Mack aerial basket. A significant fire of that time occurred in May of 1983 when the Belmont Hotel burned. The structure was not a complete loss, but it did sustain extensive damage. It was soon remodeled, though, and is still standing and occupied today in the 400 block of North Higgins Avenue. Fire Chief Charles H. Gibson led Missoula Fire Department into the 90s. He served from 1987 to 1998. Under his leadership, many changes came to the fire department. In 94, Missoula hired its first female firefighter. Her name was Marie Buzzard. She is pictured here working with a fellow firefighter the following year in 95. As the city pushed further to the northwest, yet another fire station was built to serve that area. Station 4 is located on Latimer, near West Broadway. It was built in 1994 and includes many additions. It has a public meeting room, the fire department's only training tower which can be burned to simulate real situations, and the master mechanics bay where the department equipment can be worked on. It also has the capacity to run two engine companies and a truck company from the one location. <laughs> The following year, the old headquarters building at Pine and Ryman was replaced with a new headquarters station and administration building at Pine and Madison Streets. We had 68 firefighters by this time that now worked from four fire stations. The 90s also brought about Missoula Fire Department's participation in the world-renowned combat challenge that your Missoula firefighters still compete in every year. Some may even remember when we hosted the event right here in Missoula at Southgate Mall. Not only do we participate every year, but Missoula has taken the World Championship twice as a team and once in the individual men's competition when our very own Brad Rowe ran in 2001. Here's a clip of Brad's run on that very exciting day. Great, great job. Come on. Get up there, Brad. did bring with it some tragedy though, as we had several memorable fires during that decade. Some may remember in 92 when the mansion at the top of Whitaker Drive burned to the ground, or the double front fire on Alder. 
How about in 1993, when the Blue Mountain Clinic was set ablaze? And then the Roxy Theater. With all the advancements, Missoula still suffered some great losses. Just more reminders, though, that things must constantly improve and we must always stay ahead of new technology and firefighting skills in order to protect our city and its citizens. Chief Robert Deed served from 1998 to 2002 as he brought the fire department into the 21st century. Change as usual came to the fire department with the change in what type of engines we are using as our first line fleet. You may be familiar with seeing them. They are now made by Pierce Manufacturing and we have gone back to the traditional fire engine red for their color. The city population is approaching 70,000. We employ 75 combat firefighters and have a fleet of apparatus and equipment that continues to grow as the needs of Missoulians do. Chief Tom Steenberg began as fire chief in 2002 and leads our department today. Your fire department responds to every type of emergency from fire to medical to technical rescues and multiple other services. When not responding to them, we are training to more effectively handle them on a daily basis. We run engine companies that can supply both basic and advanced life support to the community. We have an effective and efficient fire prevention bureau and our firefighting operations are supported by a great administration staff. Fire Department, this is Cheryl. This is your Missoula Fire Department and its members and we are dedicated to serving our community in any way that we can. If there is ever anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to call.